Well, I am delighted to say Dame Diana Ellis from the Sports and Recreation Alliance and Olympic silver medalist Gail Ems, who's just been appointed to the Badminton England coaching staff, joins me now. <laughs> Welcome to you both. Thank you, Thank you. We looked at these targets. Let's start with you, Di. <laughs> Are quotas, do you think, the right way to tackle getting more women involved higher up in boardroom level? I'm a strong believer in equal opportunities. Uh, I think a little PR needs doing on quotas because it does make us sound a little bit like cattle. Um, <laughs> and certainly, from my perspective, the aim, it should be an aim, there should be a structure, and there has to be opportunities for everyone. So, uh, as far as quotas are concerned, uh, I think the jury's out on that. I'm not certain it will work. I think the structures have to be put in place uh, with the governing bodies themselves. For you, girl, do you agree with that? Yeah, it's very hard for quotas, and I understand why there are quotas. We have to have quotas because governing bodies get money from the government to, you know, to perform. You, you, it's um, it's, it's government money to go out there to produce the athletes so if you've got the minister for women maria miller saying that we need more women in the boards then you kind of have to tick that box along with all the development of the sport to try and get medals it is something governing bodies i don't i don't think they are going to be able to do what they what they're going to set out i don't think they're going to match the quota but at least it's a wake-up call for me this is what it's about yes there is this quota but i think it makes the governing bodies just stand up and say Oh yeah, actually, maybe we should look at how we, we structure our sport, how this is working, and maybe are there changes that we can be made for the better. Mm. It shouldn't just be a tick box, just because you're whatever sport you are. It shouldn't just, oh, we've done this, that's ticked. We've done that tick. It should be, let's make the sport the best it could be. So yeah, like I said, it is the jury's out on that, but mm. at least it's a wake up call. I think it risks then unsuitable candidates mm. being put in place for a job because of the box ticking die. Yeah, I think I think there are ways that we can do it, and certainly all the people, uh, be they high performance athletes, coaches, everybody, have said what we don't want is the wrong people in the wrong in the wrong job. We want people with skills. We've got some absolutely super women in sport and as um, back to the structure part of this we have to have as athletes have we have ambassadors yeah. to bring young people forward what we need within governing bodies and what my own governing body as rowing had we've had champions champions both men and women to encourage uh, women and uh, all, well, diversity across the board into leadership roles. Mm -hmm. There are plenty of programs in place. The uh, Sport and Recreation Alliance, UK Sport, are all doing leadership programs. And also, with independent directors now, we can bring in women with skills. It's an ideal opportunity to get women into governing bodies. Yeah, quite right. Well, we saw there from Jane Dougal's report, there are four boards who told us that they don't have a women on the board. Now, Goldball say they do find it hard to attract people to an mm. unpaid role, but they are trying to aim for a truly representative board. England squash and racquetball had a woman on the board for 10 years. That was just until quite recently. But Di, you've served on boards for 26 years. Is Maria Miller's request realistic for those working in the field? You'll know everything about this. Mm. Well, when I say change structure, I, 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 it's the time of board meetings. I think we're being a little bit incestuous in that there are only certain people that can now sit on board. We've got to think of the time of day. I mean, certain, I mean, hopefully we're attracting women with very skilled women with children who would like to be on a board, but an evening would be, or a weekend would be the only time they could attend a board meeting. And uh, what we want, as I say, is those with the right skills, uh, possibly uh, women as with men. And I would say this right across the board with uh, uh, um, directorships. It is about a business and you need uh, lawyers, uh, marketeers and others who can give the time and during the day it can affect their jobs. 
so we have to be a little bit more realistic of when we hold our board meetings. And girl, should governing bodies be judged more on how many women are getting involved? When you kind of like more grassroots level, for example, British Cycling, yeah, they don't have a women on their board, but they have a very successful Breeze programme. They've managed to engage 23,000 women in the sport in the last six months. Yeah, well, British Cycling at the moment are on such, they are the, the top for every governing body to look at. And no, they don't have a female on the board, and yet everything is going fine in the place. This is another way if they were struggling to get females on board, if they were struggling to get females into sport, then yes, maybe there's something they should be looking at. But at the moment, everything is going fine. They've got some great coaches, great setup there, and things are going well. Um, I think it's, it's just hard because I'm stereotyping a lot of boards. They are more um, older males on that board. And you know, sometimes the best answer for them to come up with is how, how to get more females in uh, is, oh, let's make things pink. That will get mm. girls into sport. Let's make a racket pink or let's make a bike pink. And that will make them you know, go on a bike. And sometimes you just want to shake your head because that is not the way to go mm. forward. And British Cycling are, are, are a great example of actually going, well, we're not going to do that. This is how we're going to do it. And we have done it exactly well. So yeah, it would be great, an ideal world. It would be great to see more females in the inner mm. board. But at the moment, when things are going well, they've got the right people in the right job. They don't need to go along that line. Then that's fine. As long as the structure is absolutely is, is right for the sport. We mentioned four of those sports. Uh, baseball and softball, two parts of the same sport. Uh, baseball are working closely with softball to bring more women into sport. What can sports that are doing well at promoting women maybe learn from others that, that don't have as many women involved, I? That women themselves have got to be champions. Mm. Uh, when a woman gets there, uh, into leadership positions, she's got to encourage uh, good people. And so those, those women that they've managed to bring onto their boards, please go out and look for young women, uh, and well, all age of women, but young women particularly, who have skills and can, you can uh, bring them through, nurture them, mentor them, do everything you can to give them confidence. Certainly, you know, as I say, we have lots of skilled women, but there is a certain amount of lack of confidence and understanding what a board does. Uh, mm. So that would be my solution.